all know that we have five senses. We can see, we can hear, we can touch, we can smell and we can taste. Now this is something that from very early on people have been trying to mimic by technical devices which would do the similar job as we do. So we have dramatically sensitive optical sensors, we have very, very sensitive microphones. But when it comes to smell and taste, there's nearly nothing on the technical side that we can do. Now, why is that so? First of all, what is smelling and how do we smell and taste? This is a very complicated process where small molecules that reach our nose by air are then recognized by molecules in our nose and are then translated into an electrical signal that is transmitted to our brain and processed there and eventually gives us the impression of we smell something sweet, we smell something like chocolate, we smell something like whatever. It is much more complicated than when it comes to seeing because when we have a camera, then we have a device that translates photons into an electrical signal and eventually we generate a picture and we can even do this in color. Now when it comes to smelling, we talk about not photons, we talk about molecules. We have in some cases a single small molecule that gives us the impression of smelling, for example, mushroom. When we open a bottle of red wine, and it has then what we call the bouquet, it has hundreds if not thousands of small molecules that make then the richness of this full-bodied wine. And this is why then technically we have a totally different challenge, because we need to develop devices that can do the same kind of selectivity, the same kind of bandwidth, and the same kind of sensitivity. And this is why it's still not on the market as a smell sensor or a taste sensor in the way we have extremely sensitive cameras or photo detectors. What makes this process so difficult to realize is the merging between biology and electronics. This is what we call bioelectronics. So essentially we want to convert a biological signal into an electronic one just like our brain does. The way we realize our sensor is by taking from the world of electronics the concept of a field effect transistor. Upon normal operation, we create a stable baseline that is basically just the current between source and drain. Upon proper functionalization of this FET, we create a system that generates a selective electronic response to a given analyte by changing the charge transport characteristics of the graphene itself and this generates an electronic readout. This is actually the major advantage of the system, to be able to electronically detect a label-free small molecule. A key challenge in realizing this biosensor is the designing of the individual material's components. The material that connects the two electrodes, drain and source, needs to fulfill several criteria. First of all, it needs to be a semiconductor with excellent charge transport properties. It also needs to be thin and flexible, yet strong and robust as it operates in an aqueous environment. And it needs to be biocompatible, yet it must not interfere with the analytes in solution. Our approach to this project is to implement the world's thinnest material, graphene. We take this graphene and deposit ultra-thin layers of a metal oxide on the surface to create a hybrid material and then tune the electronic communication between the two components by engineering defects and interfaces. Once we have our graphene layer, um, we need to attach relatively large biomolecules onto the surface. And this process needs to be done in such a way that the biomolecule itself stays intact. And most importantly, also that the recognition of the analyte is still possible. So the orientation of the biomolecule really matters. Considering the plethora of functional groups, inside a biomolecule, it's actually impossible to do that by using traditional synthetic chemistry. So therefore, we use a concept called bioorthogonal click chemistry, a chemistry that makes use of specific artificial functional groups that selectively and rapidly uh, react with each other, but do not interfere with the functional groups of the biomolecule. You could literally say that this chemistry is orthogonal to biology or life, which is why such reactions can even be carried out in living systems. To understand and also to develop new bioorthogonal tools, so we start by investigating those click reactions using computational methods. Based on these results, we select the most promising bioorthogonal reagents, which will then be prepared here in the lab. 
and after that to finally investigate parameters such as selectivity, stability, and reactivity, uh, we use optical methods such as fluorescence measurements and spectroscopy. Like in an assembly line, the fabrication of our final biosensor requires different steps. Once the graphene is placed on the chip, the immobilization of the biomolecules can begin. Together with the Interactive Media Systems group at the TU Wien, we have created a virtual reality simulation for our students to illustrate the different length scales that we work with. At first, we are standing on a sheet of graphene, which is one square kilometer big and every black dot is one carbon atom. In comparison, the biomarkers are huge. They are about 4 nanometers in diameter, which at this scale is the size of a small kid. The big yellow walls on the horizon are our gold electrodes. At this scale, they are 200 meters high. We don't just have one of these electrode pairs, but we have 100 on a single chip. Once the biofunctionalization is finished, the chip is transferred to our flow cell and hooked up to our electrical readout system and the sensing can begin. Just imagine you open your fridge, you see there is still a stick, it looks good, and then what you do, you smell at it. This is the final quality control for food, and this is what we would like to do also with a technical device. Environmental monitoring is something that we are extremely interested in also doing automatically with the network of sensors that monitors our environment. And last but certainly not least is all the medical applications. If we could develop sensors that smell what we have in our exhaled breath, what we have in our emission from our body, and we could sense that as a means to detect is that a healthy person, is that a person that is under stress, is that a person that has a certain disease, that could be an enormous potential for applications as well. The goal is actually to combine and miniaturize our entire sensor setup to something like this. This is our so-called dollar sensor, which we have developed with Professor Kimis's group from Columbia University. It's very cheap, it's lightweight, and it's easy to use. You just put it in and plug it into a USB port and hook it up to your smartphone, and it automatically starts with the measurements. The huge improvement of our current system is that by using specific biomarkers, we can make our sensor much more powerful and versatile. There are many challenges ahead of us, but the goal and the applications are worth all the efforts.